Hey guys, I hope you are good. Happy New Year. As you can see from the title, we're going to be talking about journalists, and I'm using that term loosely. This is a video that I've been meaning to make for a little while now, but after I got a request yesterday, it kind of spurred me on to get all of my thoughts out on video. Obviously, there is a lot of interest from many people about alternative ways of living and what it is like to live on the water. So boaters will get a lot of requests from journalists about giving interviews for articles that they're doing or um, occasionally for television um, or online media, different things like that. If any of you are a member of any online boating forums, then you m most likely will have seen these sort of requests. They come up all the time, to the point that even some of the forums that I am a member of have banned such requests. If you have seen any of these requests in online forums, then you also may have seen that they are often met with hostile reactions, and there are a few reasons for that. A lot of boaters are really private people and often people move onto the water as a form of escapism and it's not very nice sometimes for people to be nosy and pry too much into your business and kind of mark you out as being other or different. Although the lifestyle that we're choosing might not be conventional, mostly um, present company excluded, we're pretty normal people and a lot of the time these requests can kind of seem a little bit like like we're being made into a circus or a human zoo you know and not everyone wants people coming and prying into their lifestyle and um, into their homes and speaking from some of the experiences that I've had not even just with boating media requests but with other things as well a lot of the time journalists will overstep the mark and I don't want this to be like stagging people off because I know they're just doing a job um, and they want to get the best story possible. But it can be really hurtful and frustrating if you have set clear boundaries with someone and then they overstep that mark and they pry too much into um, things that you've agreed that you don't want to talk about or if you're misrepresented, misquoted. And with a load of the articles that come out about boats it's all the focus is so so narrow it's just about how much money people can save only looking at one type of boater which tends to be young hipsterish type people you know when they grow up and they go back to the home counties they have a jolly good laugh about it um at their next dinner party and that's not really what all boaters are like Yes, many people will save money, but a lot of people won't save money as well. People have to get a loan to be able to buy their boat. Some people are, are almost forced into living on the water because it's the only thing that they can afford. It's not necessarily a lifestyle choice. Um, and it just seems that the focus too, too much is about how much money people can save. And it really misrepresents what boat life is really like. It makes it sound far too easy, far too simplistic. Um, and I don't think a lot of the articles are very well balanced. And another thing that really annoys people on online forums when people come with media requests is that it's just such a lazy way to get in touch with people. It's not like boats are difficult to find. You know, and if you, you're wanting us to give up our time and our opinions and invite you into our home, uh, it, it just comes across as being very lazy that you haven't even gone to the effort to actually meet a real boater. And this is another bugbear of mine. You know, people ultimately are making this material because they're going to make a profit off of it. Um, and yet they expect us to give that to them for free. So as I said, I get a lot of media requests. I'll give you a list of a few that I have and a few that I haven't and the reasons why. I think the first interview that I did, it was an online um, written article. I think it was for the BBC. And I th I'd only just moved onto my boat at the time and I thought it'd be really cool to, that someone had asked me. So I agreed to do it. 
but I specifically said to the person who wrote the article that I didn't want it to be all about money, I didn't really want them to talk about how much everything was costing me, how much I was saving, blah blah blah, things like that. The guy was really chatty and really friendly and lo and behold the quote that he gave from me was about how much money I was saving compared to my mortgage. I'm gonna, I'm gonna find the article actually because I'm pretty sure he put exact figures in there. Here it is, yeah, why why are um, why young Londoners are moving to houseboats? They always call them houseboats as well. Um, that's a rant for another time. Um, blah blah blah, millennials, blah blah blah. Um, this much money, that much money. And this guy didn't pay me, by the way, but um, I didn't mind because, um, like I said, it was the first thing I'd ever done. I was really excited. And he only spoke to me on the phone, so I didn't mind too much. Um, um, in the neighbourhood of Bow in London's east, Lorna Tooley bought a narrow boat that came with its own mooring. At 29, then he said where I worked, and I didn't want him to say where I worked. Um, uh, um, the such and such, found herself recently divorced um, with cash to spend after selling the marital home. Um, I had enough money to just buy a boat and live without a mortgage. I'd always liked the idea of living on a boat and thought, you know what, I'm never going to ha have this chance again, she says. So basically we talked for ages and ages and I told him it was my childhood dream, blah 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 blah. He said, how did you afford it? And I think I quickly said, got a divorce and sold my house. Um, Tooley paid £81,500 cash, a significant proportion of which was for the mooring itself, and pays £407 a month in mooring fees, which go to wharf upkeep and security. It's not a wharf. Her previous monthly mortgage payments were £2,000. Alright, yeah, so I shouldn't have told him that I was paying £2,000 on a mortgage. And if I was to be asked an in to do an interview like that again, I'd be a lot more careful about what I say, but I got a bit excited. Yeah, that probably taught me a lesson to be a lot more careful about journalists. But on the flip side, there was an article that I did last Christmas um, in the Londonist, and it was all about spending Christmas on a boat, and it was really a, a nice article, it was well balanced, lots of brilliant photos about um, with boats all decorated up for Christmas. There was a bit in there about money but not too much and uh, I was clear that I didn't want to speak about that with the person who wrote the article and she was absolutely fine with it. She was fantastic. You should look that up. I think it was really really nice. Another thing that I did, I did a interview for Russian television. I did um and ah about doing it but the person who contacted me was was very polite um, made it clear that we wouldn't talk about money, that was my condition, that we wouldn't talk about money. Um, she was very respectful, um, and I thought it would be cool to go on TV in Russia. Um, I haven't seen the finished product, so I can't say what it turned out like, um, but the guy who came and filmed me, he was really, really nice, um, so I don't regret doing that. And then another film that I took part in was um, for a PhD student who was doing a project on composting toilets and I didn't mind doing that, I thought that that was um, a really interesting project, something that I was passionate about. I, um, sh I think she offered me some expenses but I declined that because um, you know I'm not, I'm not gonna take money from students or from charity. Uh, yeah, and she was really nice, it was an interesting project, and she brought her dog along when we were filming, so 10 out of 10 for her. So then a few things that I can call to mind that I've turned down. Here we go. Um, so there was someone else who contacted me, and she'd been on all of the online forums and got torn down on there, and she was making a film, and it was for for another foreign language television but basically it was just the same it was um let me let me read the message to you hi lorna i'm a journalist and i'm producing a story for such and such um about london's housing crisis and how it spread to the water somewhat a huge surge in the population living on narrowboats 
I'm looking for people to interview, particularly younger people who've chosen a life on the waters, perhaps in part due to high costs of home ownership. Uh, would you perhaps, um, or anyone you know, be willing to be interviewed and show us around your home? This is a good point. We would, sh we could share the footage, and you'd see the finished piece as it will be online. Okay, no, you should be sharing the finished piece uh, before it goes online. Um, blah 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 blah. Money, money. Blah, blah, blah. So I was feeling a little bit naughty, um, and I responded, No, and you will struggle to find people to interview. The people you will find who are willing to talk to you will also have lots of money in the bank of mum and dad. Uh, the people who are genuinely suffering from the housing crisis will be reluctant to talk to you. Boaters are very private people for the most part. This story angle has been done to death, and boaters are always misquoted and misrepresented. It is... A full lifestyle commitment and time investment. People that do it um, to beat high rent costs don't tend to do it for long because it's too difficult and they're not passionate about it. Another one that I turned down, someone wanted me to make a video for him, um, basically promoting his own business, but he didn't want to pay me for it. If you want to use people to make profit then you need to give them a proper payment for that. I'm quite happy to make a video about almost anything if you're going to pay me the right amount of money and I don't think it would damage my channel. But I thought he was taking the piss a little bit, to be honest. And finally, the one that I turned down yesterday, he opened the message, Dear London Boat Girl, and then told me how much he loved my YouTube channel. Clearly he didn't love it that much because he didn't even go to the effort to find out my own name. Yeah, and then he wanted me to make content for him that he was going to make money back off the back of and he didn't want to pay me for it, he was going to buy me a sandwich. So, yes, those are a few of the reasons that boaters can not be the biggest fans of journalists. Uh, however, if you are a journalist and you still want to go ahead and do an article or a documentary about boating, that's fine. Just some friendly advice that I can give you, go out and meet some real boaters. Don't just send a copy and paste message from um, on social media. Boat people talk to each other so we're probably going to know if you've sent the same message to lots of other people as well. Don't rip people off. If you're going to be making a lot of money from it, um, pay people fairly. If you're not going to be making much money, make that clear. Make it clear what your terms are, um, exactly what you want from people, um, what you're going to include, what you're not going to include, and stick to your word. And please, please, please just find a different angle to make your article about. Uh, I guess these things are going to be made regardless of what I say, but it would be nice maybe if there was a different voice and perhaps if some boaters themselves were creating this content, it would be really nice to read an article um, about boating that was written by a boater. Thank you for putting up with my ranting. If you enjoyed it, be sure to give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Ooh. And if you're wondering about an update on my engine, the day that I am filming this is the first working day back after Christmas and New Year break, so I'm going to be getting in touch with some mechanics. They've all been enjoying a well-deserved Christmas and as soon as I've done that and the engine is fixed you will be the first to know. Alright, see you all soon. Bye.